Meanwhile, the country's southeast region is said to have lost about 4 trillion naira to the seat at home order of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, in the last two years. According to the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Kalu, the order being observed every Monday across the five states of the region has stifled economic growth and has forced potential investors out of the southeast. Now, House of Representatives member Inugu East Isuzo Federal Constituency, Honorable Professor Paul Namchi, was on the news earlier to share his thoughts. Uh, personally, I would think, I think it's not a deal, but also we have to appeal to the people that that is not to a good end, but at the same time, that our people, who are, who are, everybody can understand that people deserve better and we can also do better. But uh, Mr. Sassoon hasn't solved the problem. We might also find a big solution. But uh, be, um, being, in the, being one of the lawmakers and also being one of the opinion holders here, I also think that the best has to be to appeal to our people to know that there is other, the other ways to solve the problem and can be exploited. But most importantly, well, those of us in the house are making efforts to see that the, the release uh, Nambikara, which has also been the well, now joining me to discuss this disturbing development is lawyer Chukwemeka Osuji. Um, thank you so much, Chukwemeka, for joining me. Your device is muted. Could you please unmute? Oh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Now, Chukwemeka, this is a very worrying situation. And I remember at some point, uh, the governor said that he doesn't expect for anybody to obey the seat at home order. But as things are, it's uh, inevitable not to because people are, are scared of their lives. They're threatened or they feel threatened. Now, what legal actions can be taken against these IPOB members for the obstructive behavior and, uh, you know, making the states lose a lot of money? Thank you very much. Um, first, I'll start by saying, um, as you're aware, there's been a sort of a bit of debate, um, even statements coming out from the most state government and a few other governments as to the specific persons who are doing these things, um, whether IPO, ESN, splinter groups, or even third parties. But irrespective of who's doing it, um, one thing that we can all agree on is that this is um, very condemnable. Um, it has significant um, implications for the Southeast, both in terms of security and in terms of the well-being of the place. So I think that it goes without saying that um, the onus is on the security agencies and the government to first and foremost identify who the key players in this entire practice are, identify them, understand their modus operandi, understand where they're coming from, and then go after them. I think even if um, and so people have suggested that there should be negotiations or discussions with these people on engagement. The government needs to engage from a position of power. You must know who you're engaging with and you must be in a position to compel obedience at the minimum. So we expect the security agencies to step up working with the local communities to address, yes, so the government can go after them and to the extent to which they are apprehended, I believe that the full weight of the law um, through the judicial system should be brought to bear to bring these um, people who are involved in this dastardly act to book. All right. Um, Chukwemeka, now it is really sad because this is not just a group of people we're talking about. We're also talking about the lives of innocent citizens. And losing four trillion naira in two years, that's a lot of money. So if we're talking about um, the government um, identifying those who are key players in all of this and eventually they identify them, how do they... Uh, take the position of power in a situation where the lives of innocent citizens are also um, attached to this. People are scared that uh, the IPOB members are going to come for them if the government comes for them. So how do we separate the innocent citizens? Uh, you know, how do we prevent them from being affected while carrying out the law on these people? Unfortunately, the citizens will always in such scenarios be caught in the, in the crossfire. And this didn't just start now. If he observed in the skirmishes in the northeast and generally in the north, it got to a position where you could see that the local communities were more afraid of the insurgents than the government. So they would rather obey the insurgents um, on the trip, of course, naturally speaking, given the threat to their lives and properties than, than the government. And that's why I said government must proceed from a position of power. 
the people must have confidence that if, for example, we are to disclose that we know that this gentleman over here is involved in this activity, that we will be protected. So the people must have the confidence, first and foremost, that the government can go after these people and can deal with them. Second, second, um, secondly, the people must also have the confidence that they will be protected if they support the government in disclosing who these people are. Once the people do not have that confidence, then what will happen is that everybody hides in their homes, cars in their corners, and you will not get any support from the local people. But that's why I said, even though we urge all the people in the South East to come out and mass to support the government, but the government must lead the charge. The government has been invested with the statutory and constitutional power of security in Nigeria. So they must demonstrate their ability to, to, you know, to wield that power effectively. Once they do that, then the people can then have a bit of courage to chest out and begin to complement the government's efforts. All right, speaking so the of the... Okay, speaking of the government leading the chart now, uh, Enugu Governor Peter Mba has vowed to initiate legal proceedings against Simon Epa, that's before the ICC. What evidence would be required to support these kind of actions? Well, I think um, given some of the videos we've seen, um, given statements, of, unfortunately some of these videos and statements, it's easy to then begin to debate whether they are genuine or the authenticity of the source. But given some of these things and of course the clear implications in the Southeast, people acting ostensibly either in reaction to or in obedience or in obedience to some of these statements, one can then begin to draw that causal link, that causation, and to say it appears that certain gentlemen have been engaged over time in inflammatory statements, inciting people to violence and civil disobedience, and these are the implications. So all that put together, um, I think, can be presented before the ICC to demonstrate that at the minimum. Um, it appears that there is a clear linkage between the statements or the activities of the person and what is then happening in the region. So I think that can easily be done. Then, of course, if eventually they put something together, detailed investigations can then start to get more concrete evidence. So that can be done. All right. That's the much we can take on the news at this hour. Thank you so much, lawyer Chukwemeka Usuji, for joining me to discuss this. Thank you very much.